Hey guys, it's Adrian over BHA here bringing you another product review. So again, the guys over at Zimmy Smart have been sending me all kinds of uh, uh, different smart devices for me to test out and show you guys. Today I'm doing a video on a Zimmy Smart 6 inch downlight. Now this is Wi-Fi enabled. It is uh, utilizing the uh, Tuya Smart Life app right out of the box. Uh, so you know what that means uh, for me. I will be putting Tez mode on it. And uh, we'll walk through doing that on this video here. Uh, but this is a pretty cool uh, little light. If you already have a uh, recessed light or something like that in your house, this will kind of just kind of clamp right in that uh, same enclosure. Makes it pretty easy to install. So uh, I look forward to uh, demoing this for you guys. Let's move forward with the Zimmy Smart Downlight. All right, so um, of course you can get it straight from Zimmy Smart's website if you want. Uh, they also have it on Amazon. I think it's a little bit more expensive on Amazon, but you're probably going to get it a lot quicker if you buy it from there. I'm pretty sure it's available on AliExpress as well. I'll try to put all the links in the description below. Zimmy Smart has tons of other products, so definitely worth checking out all the different stuff they have to offer. So let's do a quick run through of everything we're going to cover in this video. For starters, of course, we're going to uh, unbox the device as we normally do. And then uh, we, of course, will install the light. It's pretty easy, not a lot to that. Um, once that's done, then we're going to flash it with uh, Tasmoda firmware. Of course, we'll be using Tuya Convert for that. Once it's flashed and running Tasmoda, then we'll uh, configure Tasmoda. After that, then we're going to add it into Home Assistant. And lastly, we'll kind of just show you what that looks like in action. So let's get started. All right, so it comes in just a plain old box, not a whole lot to it, uh, nothing on the outside to kind of show you what it actually is. Open it up. You don't get a whole lot with this. You will get the light itself, which has the plug that plugs into your uh, existing light bulb, and then instructions on how to configure it uh, for the Tuya Smart Life app. Uh, it's pretty lightweight. Uh, seems to be put together pretty well. I think it will install pretty easily. You can see the clamps there on the back side that will basically uh, put it inside the existing uh, recessed lighting enclosure if that's what you have. Or if you just have a, if you just wanted to install one from scratch, you can cut a hole in your sheetrock and it should basically clamp to uh, the sheetrock as well. Once you're ready, let's move on to the next step. All right, so I was trying to figure out where in my house I wanted to install this, and uh, I kind of have decided that I'm going to install it in my uh, entryway foyer. Um, that way, at some point, maybe I can use it with some sort of alarm uh, notification, have it flash red or something cool like that. So as you can see, there's my existing recessed light. So this should mount right there uh, very easily. Nonetheless, my foyer light actually already has a, um, a Sonoff uh, controlling the switch. So this will just kind of add functionality to that, I guess, by giving me the ability to uh, change the colors and all kinds of cool stuff like that. And as you can see here, um, I've got it installed. Uh, you can barely even notice that anything has really changed. Uh, other than, um, you know, it's got to cover over the whole entire thing. Uh, but we'll flip it on. Um, it's plenty bright. These things are quite powerful. So uh, I was very pleased with uh, how bright uh, the light actually was. All right. So now that we got this thing installed, let's go ahead and get it flashed with Tasmoda. All 
All right, so uh, for these particular devices, um, it is very easy to flash over the air. So that's always awesome. You don't have to uh, solder any wires. We're basically just going to be using a Raspberry Pi like you see here uh, with an SD card running Tuya Convert. So in the Tuya Convert directory on my uh, Raspberry Pi, we're going to run the start underscore flash dot sh script. Of course, when we do, it comes up and gives you some instructions and warnings and whatnot uh, about what could happen if you were to, uh, you know, uh, flash it and end up breaking the device. Once you've kind of gone through and recognized that there are uh, possibilities of failure there, then go ahead and hit yes. It, of course, will then uh, tell you that you need to add a device to the ad hoc Wi-Fi vtrust dash flash. Uh, of course, use my iPhone here, so you can see uh, just searching for the um, vtrust dash flash. Connect to that one. If it's the first time that you've used it, of course, it will prompt you to type in a password, which you can see down below. Once you're connected, go ahead and hit enter on the command line and it will take you to the next step. Now it may take a, a few seconds for it to find the device. This actually happened pretty quickly, but uh, that is not always the case. So uh, don't, uh, don't get discouraged uh, if you see that it is uh, not picking it up right away. Give it a little bit of time to go out and search for the device and try to find it. Once it does, you'll see it start flashing, similar to what you see here. And it'll take it a little bit to flash, but it shouldn't take too long. Once it is done, then of course it comes up with your next steps. Uh, we want to uh, take advantage of step three here, and we're going to do a curl http colon slash slash 10.42.42.42 slash flash three. Now this will uh, basically fla uh, finish flashing the device with a base version of Tasmoda. And then of course, we'll restart the device. Give that a second to come back up. Once that's done, uh, you should be ready to move on to the next step. All right, so now that we have Tasmoda uh, running on our downlight and we have it connected to our Wi-Fi network, we can go ahead and kind of configure it so that it will function properly with the type of device that it is. Under configuration, we're going to go to configure module. And the module type that we're looking for, I already have mine selected, is of course AI Lite. Uh, it's number 27. Once you have that one selected, you can hit save. Of course, it will restart and uh, take it a few seconds to come back up. It should look something similar to this. Basically, it will have a, uh, a brightness dimmer there and a toggle to turn it on and off. Now, as you can see, you can't actually control the light color here uh, in the uh, in the web interface. Um, there are a couple options there. You can, of course, do it with uh, console commands. Uh, you can change it to whatever you want. Or, of course, you can do like what we're going to do, which is uh, configure it for MQTT and add it into Home Assistant. Uh, so, of course, let's go back to configuration and just click on configure MQTT. Make sure you have everything entered correctly in there uh, for your MQTT broker and username and password if you have one of those, as well as what you want your topic and uh, full topic to be and everything like that. Once you have all that in there, go ahead and save it again. And then we will be ready to move on to the next step. All right, so we are going to edit our light.yaml file here and get this thing added. Uh, doing a vi light.yaml, going to find an open spot down here at the bottom. Of course, the platform will be MQTT. The name will be whatever you want to call it. I'm calling mine for your down light. You call yours whatever you want. Uh, command topic, this will be uh, the command topic that you created in the configuration of Tasmoda. And I'll have all this in the description below so you can kind of copy and paste it. Go ahead and the state topic. 
should be similar to the command topic, uh, just changing uh, just a few of the key words there. Now, state value template. I'm not 100% sure this is uh, necessary, but we're going to go ahead and add it anyway just to be on the safe side. I don't normally add the template uh, configuration lines. But this one is value underscore JSON dot power. All right, brightness state topic. Should pretty much be the same as the regular state topic. And the brightness command topic, instead of power at the end, it will say dimmer. Brightness scale. I think by default the scale is 255. Um, so I think for these lights uh, it's just 100. So I've changed that to 100 here. Brightness value template. Now, again, I, I'm not sure that the template uh, configuration is needed, but we're going to put it in there anyway. Value underscore JSON dot dimmer. white value state topic again this should be pretty much the same as the other state topics white value command topic will also be the same as the other command topics uh, except that instead of power or dimmer it's going to say channel 4 we're also going to set the white value scale to 100 and we're gonna go ahead and add the white value template as well. We'll call it value underscore JSON dot channel, and then put three in braces. We'll set the payload on to be on in capital letters and the payload off to be off. Now the RGB command topic, again, the same as the other command topics, but at the end it will say color two. And then, of course, the state topic uh, for RGB is the same as the other state topics as well. Now, the RGB value template is value underscore JSON dot color dot split. And then in parentheses as a comma to uh, use that as a separator there. And then a brace zero colon three. join and then in parentheses another comma there and then close all that out once you have that in there you can go ahead and save it and of course we're going to jump over to uh, portainer and restart home assistant for our changes to take effect Once Home Assistant comes back online, we should be able to add it in the uh, Loveless web user interface here. So we'll uh, hit the plus button and add an entity card. I'm going to call it lights. You can call it whatever you want. And then, of course, the entity will be the new one that we just created. So it's light.foyer underscore downlight. Go ahead and hit save. And of course, as you can see there, it is on and has the color wheel down at the bottom and has a place to change the brightness and the white value. Pretty cool. All right, let's jump over to the last step and just kind of show you what that looks like in action. All right, so here we are uh, looking at the foyer light. I've got my phone display down here in the bottom with the uh, color wheel and everything showing. And so we're just gonna kind of jump around to different colors on the color wheel and show you how those change. So we'll go ahead and select blue. And there you get a nice blue color. Uh, 
if we jump over to pink, uh, should change to pink. Yep, there we go. And if we jump to red, we'll get a nice red color. Yeah, there it is. And of course, we'll uh, jump over here to green. There we go, we got a little green color going. So as you can see, this thing is uh, pretty awesome and it's pretty responsive. I mean, I'm impressed about how quickly it is on the response of changing the different colors. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool as well. That's the end of the video, guys. Um, pretty awesome light uh, for the price. Um, you know, I think it's definitely worth looking into if you need something like this uh, with the ability to change colors and whatnot. Like I said, uh, this six inch 10 watt light here, uh, I think is plenty powerful. Uh, it gets pretty bright, uh, works pretty well. <clears throat> Let's go over one more time everything we covered in this video. So of course we started by unboxing the device. Uh, once we did that, we installed the light. Uh, once we got it installed, then we flashed it with Tasmoda, because of course you know how much I like Tasmoda. Once that was done, we just did some minor configuration in Tasmoda so that it would function properly. Uh, then we got it added into Home Assistant. And lastly, of course, I showed you what it looked like in action. That's the end of the video, guys. I hope you liked the video. I hope you check out Zimmy Smart and all the different products that they have to offer. And like I said, I'll be throwing some of these videos, uh, you know, up as, as we kind of go along. Um, I don't want to do them continuously, but I have uh, a few Zimmy Smart devices that they sent me. So I certainly want to get those out and show those out to you and uh, get uh, some promotion for Zimmy Smart and get you guys uh, thinking of ways you can use various different smart devices and everything. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. As always, if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I will see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.